Hey everybody, this is Chris Arnold. As some of you may know, I used to work at ProServe, a sports marketing firm that represented Michael Jordan. I worked there in the early 90s, and this video is gonna get into some of the details of the very earliest days, um, the creation of the Air Jordan. As luck would have it, I was given a shoe that was one of Michael Jordan's shoes, and it had a factory sticker on the inside, and the shoe was made in 1984. So I knew it was before the release of the shoe, and uh, I thought it was a special shoe, but I really wanted to find out what this shoe was exactly. And so I started doing some research. And over the past few years, I uh, just I scoured the internet, and I was very fortunate to be able to talk to some heavy hitters um, when it comes to the Air Jordan. I dealt with Nike, Nike Archives, Peter Moore, the designer, Donald Dell, Jordan's first agent, and I dealt with many of the sneaker blogs. And I spoke to tons of collectors along the way. I've got a lot of information from, from those people as well. But I'm just gonna dive right in here to the timeline and share some stories that I've learned throughout this. So in August, it sort of starts with the meeting between Nike and ProServe. It was Rob Strasser and Peter Moore that flew to Washington, D.C., which is ProServe headquarters at the time. And it was a Saturday meeting they had with Donald Dell, who was uh, the founder and chairman of ProServe and Jordan's agent and his assistant. And they were just trying to get together and brainstorm some ideas of how Jordan could become a Nike endorsement. And Nike really wanted Jordan to endorse a Nike line. And ProServe really wanted Jordan to have his own line, and they weren't really getting anywhere, just kind of going in circles, until uh, Donald Dell tells a story in his book, which is called Never Make the First Offer, tells a story of that meeting, and he says that all of a sudden, Peter Moore just said, what about Air Jordan? And everyone just froze, and it was silent, and they all just knew, like, that was the idea. And Peter Moore mentioned that he just had a feeling about it, and on the flight home, he saw a kid get one of those wings lapel pins that they used to give to kids in the airplanes and that gave him the idea for the Air Jordan logo the original Wings logo again now this is like over 30 years ago so I don't have the exact dates of some of this stuff but before the Bulls training camp Nike did a couple of photo shoots and they were shot by Chuck Kuhn the first one was the famous Jumpman photo which was they used for advertising and it's a great poster and it was, uh, you know, it's iconic. If you look at the photo, you've probably noticed this before, but he's wearing black toes. He's not wearing the, the Chicago's there. I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. The next photo shoot, which was shortly after that, these were, I think, both in Chicago. The, the second one was definitely a Chicago neighborhood. And this second photo shoot was for a apparel catalog. They call it a um, peachy catalog. In these photos, as far as I could find, I've looked everywhere, I've only seen Jordan in these photos from this day wearing two different shoes. It's either the black toe or the bread. And Peter Moore mentioned that around this time they had come up with a home shoe and an away shoe. That was their thinking. So Peter Moore sort of agrees with me that those were probably the two shoes, the home and away. So the Chicago, I don't, they may have played around with the colors and testing things out, but it's not one of the shoes that they photographed. So that just goes to show you that it, the Chicago was not the original design. Then we, we move into October and they're getting into the preseason and the very first NBA game in Peoria, Illinois against the Pacers, Jordan wears the white and red airships. We all have seen these photos. Um, he wears that mostly throughout October, November, December of this rookie season in 84. And then some of the other players in the team wear the same shoe. Next we get to the band shoe. So we all know now that the band shoe was not an Air Jordan shoe. It was what looks to be like a pair of airships that were black and red. You, they've got the photos from the game in New York. And there's another photo here where he's um, in you know, like a warm-up practicing, stretching. And what happened was David Stern, who was the NBA commissioner at the time, he was at one of these preseason games in New York. I'm pretty sure it was the one that was upstate. And he saw the shoes and he banned the shoes. Then he banned them in October. And there's a famous letter floating around that's dated February of 85, where it's another person at Nike referring to the ban and, and putting it in writing. But they were definitely banned right then. And that affected what Nike was doing with the shoe. So, you know, it looks like before they had the photo shoot set up with the home and away shoe, and then the band happened and they sort of, you know, had to change their plans and shift things around. So, um, and then at the end of October, 
um, Jordan signs the contract with Nike and the deal's done and inked and ready to roll. So um, here's where my shoe comes in. In November, November 5th is I think the date of my shoe. It's right before he first wears an Air Jordan in a game in Chicago on November 17th against the Philadelphia 76ers. And then in November and December, he he still goes back and wears the airships in some games. Um, and, then, and then a few games he wears the Chicago's. The rest is history. I mean, we know in 85, he mostly wore the Chicago's. There's at least one game I think he wore the Black Toes against the Washington Bullets. This is what I've been able to gather, which I think is a really interesting part of Air Jordan history. It shows that the Chicago was not the original design. It confirms that the band shoe was not an Air Jordan at all. It just gives you an idea of what Nike was doing as they were kind of working through this process of trying out different shoes and then having David Stern ban a shoe in the middle of this process and how they adapted to it. And this became one of the most famous shoes of all time. I've just been thrilled to be a part of this and really and really find out all this information. I've been very lucky to talk to some very knowledgeable people. And if you guys have any questions or have any other pieces of information that help fit into this timeline, definitely leave me a comment here or you can uh, leave a comment on Instagram at Channel Chris, Chris with a K. So if you really want to go deep here, there's another video, I'll have a link to it here, where you can see uh, a lot more information about the black toe that I have and another 1985 Chicago that I have, and I do a comparison video between them and show you the differences that, that took place in just a few months with Nike. And thank you so much for listening and share this with any of your sneakerhead friends.